Good afternoon. Welcome to the final of our noon Holy Week services for this year. I'm Pastor Michelle Slott. I'd like to once again thank uh, Diane Cadle and Stephen Branch for organizing all of our music, uh, Hannah O'Donnell and Alan Bueller back at the soundboard and, and uh, slides, and uh, Delaine Rains and all of her crew back in the kitchen uh, that fixed the meals and served them and clean up afterwards, and cleaning up is the worst part in my opinion. Um, as well as to all of our preachers and our soloists. It just takes so many people to make these things happen, and you all do it so beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. So we are blessed, but we are also observing a time as we close, um, close the Lenten season, as we approach today and observe Good Friday. We have much to consider. Today, we welcome our senior pastor, uh, Barry Whipke, to share the message, The Victory of the Cross. And today, we also welcome a choir veteran uh, here at First United Methodist Church and emerging organist, Allie Kennedy, as our vocal soloist, and also she'll be sharing our prelude this morning. Uh, again, we are so blessed. Let us go with uh, a grateful heart to sit and observe and reflect during this morning's prelude, this afternoon's prelude. <laughs> Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Loving Lord, we come before you today to remember your great sacrifice. Help us to hear with new ears the story of victory that comes through such a dark day. May Jesus' perfect love drown out the voice of our own fears as we hear your call to obedience. Amen.
I have the most wonderful position here at the church. From my office, I can hear Allie practicing all the time and the beauty, and I hear Diane as she goes over all of the music. And it is such a joy, and I thank you so much for sharing your talents with us. I, too, wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you to all of my colleagues that have been part of this, and to everyone. Thank you to Michelle for uh, facilitating for us every day our, uh, our services. I'll be honest that I thought a lot this week about my brothers and sisters in North Dakota who are experiencing the tremendous spring storm. I grew up on a farm. My wife and I farmed for 13 years by Flandreau. We've experienced the storms of life. And as I watch the social media and the farmers, their wives, their children struggling to save the lives of their cattle, my heart went to them and I prayed for them. And I pray that on this dark Friday, we will see the love and the life that comes when we seek it. Today I'd like to share a message entitled, The Victory of the Cross. Would you pray with me? Lord, we open our hearts to your leading, to your Holy Spirit. Walk with us on this Friday, this day of death, and crucifixion. Walk with us that we might be open to see the joy and the victory that will come. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to share scripture with you from Luke, the 23rd chapter, beginning at verse 44. Jesus' death. It was now about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. 
Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women, who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching all these things. May God bless his word to our hearts this day. In the rolling hills of northern New Jersey, there stands a small church with a large stone cross cut inside the wall. Now, it happened that one of the church's wealthier members didn't like that cross and said it was an eyesore. He offered to give a huge donation to the church in order to take the cross out of the wall and replace it with a beautiful stained glass window. But when he presented the idea to the church leaders, they said to him, we cannot do what you ask. The architect designed the church to have the cross in that place. It gives strength to the wall. If you take away the cross, you will destroy the church. Fitting words for us on this Good Friday. The foundation of our church, the foundation of God's church, is the victory that came through the cross. When you take away the cross, you destroy the Christian church. The great hymn of the church is the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. However, many would rather look into the light and the beauty of a stained glass window than to stare at the dark agony and the sacrifice of Calvary and a cross. Good Friday, the day of darkness and death, a part of our Easter and Holy Week journey that many dread. We love the joy of Easter morning, the resurrection of Jesus. But the truth is that if we take away the blood-soaked cross, the suffering and the shame of Calvary, all our faith would be in vain. Within the Easter celebration, we're called to look to the cross, an instrument of death, which God turned into the way of salvation. When asked, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. On this Holy Week journey, Jesus was arrested He was falsely accused. He was sentenced to death. Many of his followers abandoned Jesus. They with the crowd yelled, crucify him, crucify him. They were disappointed in the king who had come to set them free. Jesus was beaten. He was forced to carry his cross to Calvary, where he was laid upon the beam, the nails driven into his wrists and into his feet. The cross with Jesus nailed upon it was hoisted into the air and dropped into the hole dug into the earth. A sign was placed above Jesus' head. This is the King of the Jews. This was no ordinary execution. This was no ordinary death. 
Jesus' death was sanctioned by God. God gave his son, Jesus, that Jesus might be the sacrifice for our sin. This death, this execution was different from any other execution. Erskine White said this was a divine drama, a moment of eternity come to earth. The sky began to darken, the birds of the air stopped singing, the flowers began to fold back into their buds. The people looked up in confusion and fear. Something was wrong. All of nature was upset. All of nature was involved in the events of Calvary. Our scripture said it was now about the sixth hour and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. In this very moment, the whole earth responded to Jesus' death. This was God's moment. As God demonstrated by the gift of his son, how much he loves us. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he said this, he breathed his last. The victory of the cross begins with Jesus' death. Jesus' death brought the victory over our sin. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, because of his shed blood, his broken body, our sin is no longer a barrier between us and God. The scripture said when Jesus died, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. The holy of holies, where the presence of God resided, was open so that all had access, access to God through Jesus Christ. The scripture said the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. The very Roman soldier who executed Jesus saw and he believed. The cross, an instrument of death, is also the ultimate proof of life. Proof of God's love for all people. The song, O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The cross must always be at the center of our faith. If we take it away, we destroy God's church and all that it stands for. Take away the cross and you take away the victory of the cross which Christ has given to each of us. The victory of the cross. As Christians, we celebrate Easter. We celebrate an Easter religion, victory over death, but we live in a Good Friday world. A world filled with darkness, a world filled with sin and hatred. But on this Good Friday, we are called to look to the cross, the cross where hope was given to all people. We look to the death of Jesus, the sacrifice for each of us, the sacrifice that leads to life eternal. On this dark Good Friday, we now wait for the joy of Easter and the resurrection of the one who gave his life 
for us. Thank you, Pastor Barry. Like the women who had followed Jesus, we stand at the foot of the cross. The unthinkable has happened, and yet we watch and wait. Hear the good news. Victory is the Lord's and ours, because in God's eyes, we were worth this ultimate price. Please join me in a word of grace before our meal. Lord, we thank you for the words of nourishment that you have shared with us this week through song, scripture, and message. We thank you that you are never done with us, that you continue to call us to redemption, to refine our understanding of who you are and how we follow you more closely as your disciples. Lord, the message of the cross is wonderful and difficult. Help us to let go of what we don't understand and embrace how the Holy Spirit calls us to receive your love and grace and offer forgiveness to one another. We ask that you bless the hands that have grown the food and prepared the meal we are about to receive. Let the words we speak be uplifting and encouraging to one another, and may the food nourish, nourish our bodies that we may serve you with our very lives. Amen.